Today we're going to look at another eBay tool that's free that most people don't know about that is an excellent tool to help you research prices and things to sell. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at a free eBay tool. This is through eBay. To get to this tool, though, you have to have the hub. So if you don't have the hub, this will not be available to you from what I can see. You got to have Terra Peak in the research aspect of this. There's another part on there that most people don't look at, which is sourcing guidance on there. We're going to hop over there right now and we're going to look at this because there's a lot of good information that you can use from this. This can help you narrow down prices, things to buy, things to buy in the future, when to sell items as well. It's got a lot of features for many different categories. So we're in the hub now. They have added quite a few things. They have payments and other options that they have been adding on to. They have stated they're going to add some more things onto this as well. Let's hop over to the research tab and show you something most people don't have a clue on. It's going to give you a lot of good information. From here, let's go to sourcing guidance. You'll be surprised. Most people haven't even looked at this section at all. Now, I've been using this for many different categories. Many it doesn't have in here, so you really got to be kind of selective on what you can use from here. So we're just going to start with picking an item. Just You can pick it by the item, or you can come down here and narrow it down to the category that it's in specifically as well too. Now I'm going to pick baseball cards and we're going to look at the breakdown here and it gives you a year's worth of information all at once. Now you can see it's got new or used. It automatically gives us used because that's mostly what you would sell or I sell I should say. Now if you look over here it's going to give you some key information and I say this about almost every category. 5% of less of any category sells for good money. The rest of it's just in that you know, random mix of who knows, couple bucks here, couple bucks there type of thing. Now it's got a breakdown for all baseball cards on the entire platform for the last year that sold. And if you look here, only 1% sold for over $500. Now this information isn't exactly correct and I'll show you why that's the case in just a few minutes here. But these are for thousands, maybe tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of listings that have sold. So 1% may not sound like a whole bunch, but that could be hundreds or even thousands of listings they are talking about based on the volume of baseball cards that sold in the last 12 months. Now it gives you averages. It shows you where you're at today. It gives you seasonality so you can see how the trends go. Now we're up right now because of course the uh, pandemic and you can see it started in February normally that wouldn't be the case at all so it's kind of skewed most of these on a normal time frame this wouldn't be skewed in this general direction you can see they're projecting it to go down just before the holidays normally it would be already down a little bit throughout the summer because most people are in sports usually are outside playing sports or a lot of them I should say and then it goes up for the holidays now you can look and track this on almost any category main category I should say what it also gives you is breakdowns you can go by year it's going to give you some growth score now obviously the higher the number the better the chances are that it would be a better area to invest in we'll look at some more so you can kind of get the gist of it you can come back here and find individual scores for years for products and all sorts of different things but up here as well you can just click the product button they're going to tell you where the growth is in all of baseball cards. And if you look at the top list, it's boxes, sealed boxes, unopened boxes. And that's almost always the case. So if you're not familiar with this, this gives you that same information that those of us who are into cards and buy them know that boxes are always the best investment. A sealed box of any kind of something at least investable in will be something good to actually buy. Next then goes packs. Now cases is a little different because most people don't sell them in cases, you know, value wise. So cases will still be up on here, but mostly you want to be selling them as boxes. Cases, what I see are ones that aren't worth as much selling them as a box. That's why they're still on the list like this. 
And then lots, obviously, a big lot of something, a set of something, a baseball coin, a team set. It gives you the whole breakdown. And as it goes down, it gives you the basic lowdown on it. So down to singles, they're 40%, very low. E tops in hand, 40%, very low. So you can judge on something like that. It also gives you the card manufacturers that are hot. So if you don't know which baseball cards are the hottest ones to invest your money in, this gives you a breakdown from the very last year. Bowman was the number one seller in baseball cards with a rising score of 62. Golden Press Under, Gaudy, good company. Tops as well. Now, Sweet Corporal and some of these other ones don't exist anymore, but they're still hot sellers. That's the key on these. You want to know what's selling. This is going to give it to you. Like Hostess. These are promotional ones and Wonder Bread and things like that. They could be vintage. Doesn't necessarily have to mean that, but you can narrow this down by year. You can narrow this down by individual topic as well. I could just go type in Hostess up at the top and change the entire structure of what I'm looking at. It breaks them down by category too. So 1970 till now basically is almost a dead category. So again, you can narrow these down. Top combination is also a good tool because it puts a lot of the information together. 1995 single card upper deck Los Angeles Dodgers team cards for specifics are going for a dollar and they're on the rise. Now, that doesn't mean all the cards go for a dollar. That just means the average over maybe 10,000 cards is a dollar. So it might be an area that you'd want to look into 1995 Upper Deck to figure out what is going on in there. Why is this rating so high and have such a flying score on there? You might realize that a player is in that set, and then boom, you've got something to look for. Maybe nobody else knows that specific player. You're just finding it out there. That would be a good way to track down something that would be key for something like that. It goes down into more details. 2013 Colorado Rockies. Now, this is from the new one. This is high flying now. $15 a piece for any of those cards basically is average of $15. Again, you could go down and sort out. You could type in on a search of completed or on Terra Peak. 2013 Colorado Rockies tops and see what happens. You'll get uh, some information from this, but you may not have looked for that information had you not seen scores and ratings on here. So in all honesty, this is actually pretty good information. In some aspects, a lot of this information you would have to pay for to get on other platforms and stuff. This is like one of those add-in apps for other programs. So in all honesty, this is fairly good, especially if it's something newer or you're selling NOS items or electronics or anything like that. It gives you averages. It gives you base structure on dates, model numbers you can track down, all of that stuff you can tweak in here, and it'll categorize this all just towards the item you are looking for. So if there's one specific item you're looking for, it will give you a complete break down. Now let's just click and do a new one here. We're going to click a brand new one here. We're going to do Spider-Man comic book and number one, and we're going to search for that right now. This will give you an idea on averages. So if you want to know what something sells at, if you want to know if something graded will sell better than something ungraded, this gives you all of that information, and so many people haven't a clue this is here. Even those who have used it, I actually called around trying to figure out a question on how to do something in here, and everybody I talked to, no one even knew what I was talking about, which I was really surprised. This has been out for a little while. It does work. Now, you can even further go down here, and we're going to sort this down to um, Silver Age. So we can pick the era that we want as well. Now, you don't have to pick an era. Superhero as well is another one. We're going to pick Spider-Man. Again, it's giving me superhero because Spider-Man is in my title. So now I'm just going to be looking at, from here, Spider-Man Comics, the Silver Age, the first edition, first comic book number one from The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, so you can look at here. You can see the average 8% sold for over $500. 23%, 100 to $500, and then back on down there. Now, this is going to include other items that just aren't as hot. Again, stuff's selling like mad right now, so it's kind of skewed on the chart. But normally, this would be something that you would be uh, well-praised to help and use you to judge your prices. Now, you can look right here. We're under certifications. CGC is by far the best bet on a comic book. Now, uncertified, you judged it yourself. 
is like a investment almost when someone buy something like that because they're hoping it'll grade high enough to raise its value most people do that that would be something like a comic book shop graded it themselves now cbcs another grading system pgx neither of those are great ones to use when you look at what sells the most everybody knows cgc if you didn't know that again more information that you can judge that from. Now you can come down here and we can just look at CGC or specifics, or you can even come down here and look at the exact grade you have, and it's going to give you the amount of that. It'll give you some averages straight on down the line. So in all honesty, if you don't know prices, this really does help you in many, many ways. There's tons of categories. Let's look at a few other things here in this same one. Again, Spider-Man comic book one is what we're looking at from the Silver Age, 1955, 56, I think, through 69, somewhere in that range. So you can even see that Daredevil. So again, we're in Spider-Man, so there's got to be a Daredevil issue of Spider-Man somewhere in that run would be my guess. Or somebody's mix mashed in title, so the title may say Spider-Man, but it may be another comic book line where, say, Spider-Man is in Daredevil. That could be the case, too. But again, Spider-Man is in the term of these results. So it's showing Daredevil because Spider-Man is tied with that. You just got to understand the information here to uh, be relevant with it. Featured requirements. So right here, some more information. So you can instantly look at things that might be expensive things that you should look into again it's got other things in here so people list things differently they'll add words to the title so sometimes you'll get some screwball things like that in here this is all good legit stuff to look for avengers number four star wars comic books number one spider gwen number one amazing spider-man in general amazing fantasy 15 first appearance of spider-man you've got spider-man 50 key issue you've got spider-man number one so it gives you a lot of information gives you a lot of information on series whether it's typed in again this is a little skewed here because it just depends on how someone typed it in but now we can look at grading as well too so it gives you the opportunity to break these down by grading now we can look at top combination, which is probably the best best option on something like this. This is a CGC Spider-Man number one. It's graded 3.0, which is fairly low on a scale of 10, $1,690. Again, that's the average price of any CGC 3.0 that's sold on eBay in the last year. Now we can look at more of these as well. And this is just one example of this. This does it for all kinds of things. So if you want to know what a graded version of it goes for in certain amounts, you can use this. But again, compare like to like. Make sure that it has the issue number in it. So here is a number one. Again, I don't know why a 3.0 would have graded and sold for $1,690 versus a 5.5 that went for $821 doesn't make any sense but again prices can vary by the day of the week this is more along the lines of what you would expect again this is specifically amazing spider-man number one we're talking about i'm only looking at the ones that say amazing spider-man you have to understand that sort of information on here here's a 3.5 that only went for 924 so that went up top was an anomaly basically let's look up a pair of jeans we'll put jeans we're going to do bugle boy and we're going to do a size 32. Um, and then we're just going to look under men's clothing jeans here. Again, this is very useful, I have to say. This is something that most other places you'd have to pay for as an add-on to track this information, especially if you're like selling on Amazon or something here. Now, if you look over here again, this is skewed. It says zero sold over $500. In most cases, there is no zero sold. It's just such a small amount. There could be 100 only that sold over the entire year, but maybe 10,000 pairs of jeans sold for the whole year. So it's not going to register over 0.5 to round up to the next percentage, which would be one. So there still is almost always something that's sold at the highest amount. You can see, though, from looking at here that almost 60% of all Bugle Boy jeans of this size sold for under $20. So in my book, that would be a category to specifically stay away from. This can give you that sort of information. It can tell you which categories are better to sell in. You can compare brands 
in here. Again, you may have to do several searches, write the information down, and then do another search so you can pair the numbers. I don't see an option yet to compare one by one on the same screen, but this is still a very good uh, breakdown on here. Now it's got other brands in here and it's telling you which ones are hot. Rock Revival, Buckle are selling, Cinch are selling, Levi's is still in the top here. So if you look at the scale here, it's going to tell you the basics on which ones you would want to invest more money in, which ones you should center in on clothing. Again, this works for almost anything in this type of category that has hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of the items selling. There's all kinds of jeans selling, so if you narrow it down just by jeans type in jeans you can type in shirts you can type in all different sorts of categories and things like that again size I can go in here and I can readjust them many people add all kinds of things in there you can also tell which sizes sell the best on here you can literally judge it by a rank scale now I wished it had more ranking but all you got to do is go down here and you can pick which size which rank you are looking for and it will add that in and then recalculate the entire thing here. Inseam, same thing. It gives you that information. Style, boot cut is the most popular. Skinny is the next. And then you've got Carpenter Classic. And then Button Fly goes all the way down to 46. Stretch and then Vintage. Again, Vintage does sell for a lot of money. Again, you can type that in here and narrow this down. You can narrow it down to the age. Adults are best. You know, combinations here. So Levi's 3434 boot cut is one of the best ones, and they're routinely selling in the $22, $23 range. This is a big help, honestly. So if you've got time right now, you can research all this stuff to give yourself a pricing on it. Again, these are average sale prices over the year. If you look at the trending for almost anything you sell, it does go up during the fourth quarter. So we're not very far off the first quarter. We're almost up to June right now. So you only got a couple more months and then the trend change is going upwards again. I would be surprised if you didn't learn something from checking this out, especially if it's some of the items that you have. If you're selling new items that there's tons of them, this can give you a little heads up on terminology to use uh, and things like that as well. Using the type, it depends on the category. All different types of information will be down here depending on the category. We've looked at several of them, but I will be shocked if you can't find some good, useful information out of here. A lot of people ask me, what's the good time to sell this? What's the good time to sell that? This gives you the information. What's the average price on something I get asked all the time? This gives you the information. What's going to be hot in a specific category? Again, this gives you that information. It is though specific, it doesn't list categories that don't have a ton of like-like items, but it's really good for the ones that it does offer. So check it out. Again, it's sourcing guidance. This is in the hub under the research tab of the hub. So if you don't have a store, this may be a good reason or an added bonus to actually up your level and get a first level store, at least as long as it includes this tab with sourcing guidance. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. you about this very extraordinary can inside it lives a magical ice that turns itself with a little water into a soft drink so thick and cold you have to eat it with a spoon and when you eat it orange chills and thrills run all over inside you that's why this very extraordinary can is called chills and thrills that's all goodbye